Well, good morning, chat. Oh, you've got a lovely week to look forward to. As this Monday morning greets you, I'm sure you're looking forward to the commute to go to work or to class or whatever it is that you do uh, during the weekdays. Uh, we've got uh, some fun planned today. Uh, sadly, it's going to be a little bit of a shorter stream. I have some appointments this morning, so uh, it's going to probably be about an hour. But fear not, I've uh, divvied this up with a little pre-show, I guess you could call this stream today. And then Wednesday, the follow-up will be the show proper, I guess? Because we're going to deep dive on a girl, Gail, from the Church of Gail, the greatest thing that's ever been on the internet. You know, after that stream, I'd gone and watched quite a few of her videos. I have a better understanding of what's, of what's going on, uh, who the people in that particular comic we watched were, which we'll be watching the rest of, by the way, as well as a few other videos. Um, you've got a lot to look forward to, especially on Wednesday. Now, I don't want to cock tease you too much. I don't want to blue ball you, chat. But I'll be honest with you. If you want to watch a fully live or a fully acted live action movie starring one person playing every role, based on the amazing child audiobook by Gale, starring Gale herself, directed and produced by Gale, in which she recreates all scenes that we saw in the comic book. From strap in, putting a strap on on, and simulating raping a cat. That video is out there. We're going to be watching it on Wednesday. It's an hour long. We're probably not going to watch the whole thing, but I think you have to see it to really truly comprehend and believe it. Uh, watching a woman put a strap on uh, on herself and then simulate fucking a cat to death. Uh, it's some next level shit, really, to be honest with you. Uh, also, found out more about who those people in the comic books were. Uh, that ties into Gale's belief systems. That was Data. Our boy Brent. Brent Spiner. That was Data. And the cat he was fucking was Data's cat from Star Trek The Next Generation. So Gale uncovered the truth. Something that not a lot of people out there know. She's woke to shit. She wants to share it with the world. And that truth is, Brent Spiner has been replaced with a homosexual clone all by his evil wife who torments Gale because she knows that Brent truly loves Gale and she attacks Gale on a daily basis by dropping bombs on her house from the clouds she does that she engages in that poor Gale having to <laughs> having to dodge the munitions from Brent Spiner's wife wow uh, so we'll be watching the movie uh, we'll be uh, reading up on her on her history, some of her more interesting theories. <laughs> it's, it's fucking, it's it's really hard to put into words. It's it's some next level shit, Chad. I'm gonna be honest with you, some uh, highly next level shit. Now uh, a little bit of information did come out after the stream yesterday. I'll read this to you. I've got to pull it up myself, but I'll put it on screen right now for you. This was a comment. Somebody re-uploaded the stream. And this was a comment that appeared, and I think you're going to like it. Uh, this is from Angelina Ballerina. Uh, I can't, ba I don't, this could be completely fictional, who knows. But they're claiming they're the person that narrated that book, and they have some uh, lore for us about Gail. I'm the person who narrated the children's book. I was not paid and did not expect to be. I was in contact with Gail's handlers via IRC, and they asked me to do the narration. I got my husband to help with the drawings. I did record the entire book. Most of it isn't nearly as exciting as this chapter, though. It's actually dreadful. Boring writing for the most part. Reading it was agonizing. I don't have the audio files anymore, but I'm sure someone somewhere has them on their computer. The reason this was done was because Gail had been wrongfully terminated from her job as a cashier at Walmart, and her handlers were trying to come up with a way to get her uh, to help get her money and thought that selling her audiobook version of The Forbidden Abyss Part 1, I actually don't know if there's a Part 2, uh, if it was ever written or released, around the same time Gail was, uh, again, illegally Baker-acted, a.k.a. sectioned by her family. She was treated for paranoid schizophrenia and ended up getting approved for disability. So the audio idea, or the audiobook idea was dropped. That is some, uh, that is some, that's some deep lore on that shit. So her family Baker acted her. I think that's when they put you involuntarily into a, uh, an insane asylum because you're acting so bizarre. Uh, and I'm going to guess 
her getting put into the nut house probably had something to do with getting fired from Walmart as well. Now, maybe somebody came in and she thought they were working with a clone of Brent Spiner and were there to rape some cats or something. Who knows? We may never know the full story of why she was wrongfully terminated from the Walmart or what exactly she was Baker acted for. But she got on disability, didn't need that audiobook money, and so that project uh, apparently was dropped. However, the full thing was recorded. It's out there somewhere. Somewhere in the ether out there. And, uh, goddamn, I, I really do want to watch it all. <laughs> um, okay, so, let's see. What do we want to start with? We can jump right into the audiobook, or we can watch the trailer for the amazing movie. The, <laughs> the amazing fucking movie that Gail produced herself. Um, I, I'm gonna, you know, hold on, let me pull it up here. Uh, the trailer's a minute and 40 seconds. I don't know, you tell me, chat. What do you want to do? Should we jump right into the audiobook, finish up the last four parts? Or do you want to see Brent Spiner's Rape, A True Story, The Movie? What should we start? Trailer time? I'm seeing people say trailer time. You know what? I agree with you. Good choice, chat. Let's watch the trailer for the amazing movie we will be watching tomorrow. Let me just get this queued up. Oh, the excitement's palpable. All right. Uh, let's... <laughs> oh, this is so fucked. Okay. Uh, there we go. All right. Uh, oh, oh, I can't forget to beg for money. All right, here we go, chat. Thanks. Cheers to a fistful of Davis. What a long day we're out. In a world where drug rape and Jesuit conspiracy run rampant, a man on a mission for the woman he loves. My angel is raped. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So you know, chat. Uh, this is the this is the least disturbing of the sex scenes. Uh, the multiple rapes that happen in the movie, by the way. <laughs> Director Gail Cord Schuler. Uh, with producer Gail Cord Schuler. Did she manage to ride up and down all 18 inches of my erect penis? A Gabrielle Jenna film. Steven Spielberg raves. It's the most impressive expose of Brent Spiner's rape ever made. Uh, you know what? Actually, I'm going to back that up. I think this is the fisting scene, Chad. I can. I can tell a little bit because her arm's a little brown. Remember, in the first four parts of that audiobook, our boy Data got his ass fisted like 80 times. And I think uh, I think we're looking at this live-action version. Day of Brent Spiner's rape ever made. Spider's rape. No! No! Don't drink the Jesus juice, Macaulay Culkin! You're going to get raped! You're going to get raped! Coming fall of 2012. Fucking sold. Buy me a ticket. I'm reserving it in advance. Macaulay... They even have the Macaulay... It's, it's line for line. It's the audiobook reenacted. The whole thing. The whole thing. The fist fucking... The cat rape, getting fucked to death by an elephant, druggings, stabbings, Macaulay Culkin getting drugged and raped. How can you not think this is the most excellent piece of cinema to be, ever be created on the fucking internet? And it's all Gail. Gail did all of it. She plays every role in the movie. I think she even is the cat. I think she is the perpetrator of the cat rape and plays the role of the cat getting raped. That's Wednesday. We're watching that shit on Wednesday. Oh, I got the videos this lady has up are fucking amazing. We're going to be listening to one of them. It's the Brett Spiner poop problem. She's dedicated a lot of time to helping Brett Spiner take a shit. And we're, we're going to watch that and find out, you know, is he not getting enough fiber? What's going on there? Tomorrow, I've got some 
really good ones lined up for you. She had a Skype call with Jesus Christ, uh, and Jesus told her that he was going to inseminate her, and that Brent Spiner wanted him to do it. Uh, we've got uh, another couple of videos where she was called up by Hollywood actors, um, <laughs> telling her she could never defeat their Brent Spiner clone army. <laughs> There's some fucking amazing stuff on this lady's channel. It's uh, it's gonna be wild. It's gonna be a good time. But now, now you got a little taste of it. You got a little taste of what's coming up on Wednesday. Let us continue with um, my God. Let us continue with our audiobook adventure, because we only got so far into it. We only got halfway through parts one through four, and we have more parts to go through. So let me just uh, pull this up here. And we're, we're jumping right back in. We're going to go full steam ahead. Oh, boy, I'm fucking excited. Oh, from Dieseldorf. Been a fan since 2009. Sweetie Squad forever. Well, thank you very much. We'll see how much of a fan you are after you watch... <laughs> after you watch Macaulay Culkin get gang raped. We'll see if that fandom's still there. Okay, I think I've got it queued up. We should be good to go. Here we are. Uh, if you remember yesterday, I'll just give a quick, a quick summary... Uh, for anybody that just, uh, I guess, just joined. Uh, yesterday, we watched the first four videos of this, part one, two, three, and four. Uh, it's an audiobook for children called The Forbidden Abyss, part one. And yes, there are multiple parts. In our adventure, we followed Brent, uh, Brent Spiner, the actor who played Data, as he was viciously targeted by Lori, a horny deviant who used drugs and Jesus juice to rape him multiple times using all sorts of vile instruments and her fist. She drugged him and made him fuck a cat. <laughs> she drugged him and made him try to rape Macaulay Culkin. Terrible things were going on. This all culminated in part four, where she brought him to the zoo, drugged him up real good, and had an elephant fuck his ass. And then as he lay sobbing and bleeding on the ground, took photos of him, in his state of disarray, and then choked him to death with the photos so the police could find the body <laughs> and know what happens to people that fuck with... I, I think it was Lori. I think that was the lady's name. That's where we left off. We still have... We've still got a good 20 minutes. We've still got four parts to go through. I don't know where the story goes from here. Our main protagonist, Brent, should be dead. Maybe his black friend, LeVar Burton, is going to carry the story for us. I don't know. Will the gay love arc ever get resolved? Will the cat heal? Will Brent's anus miraculously stitch itself together? Is the elephant traumatized? There's so many questions. So let's get some answers. As we continue the Forbidden Abyss Part 1. With Part 5 of 8. Brent went to go talk to Lavar about getting rid of Lori. Lavar was the only one Brent confided in at the time. After that few hours with her, did you have any other sex with her? Lavar asked him, laying a hand on his arm. Yes, she kept breaking into my room. Okay, already confused right out of the gates. He's supposed to be dead. He got fucked by an elephant and choked to death on some photos. I don't know what kind of uh, na uh, <laughs> fucking Lazarus or resurrection shit's going on here. Maybe Lori had her friend Jesus come and bring him back from the dead. I don't know. This is probably a robot. I don't know yet. We're going to find out. I started drinking from bottled water, but she would contaminate the water while I wasn't looking and gave me the drugs again, and wound up doing even worse things to me. Oh my god, Brent. Because Brent wailed so much, LeVar just cuddled and rocked him for several minutes. She started raping me with a strap-on. Then she moved up to fisting. She got more and more perverted. She put her hand in my butt, made a fist, and thrust it in out of my anus with her fist. Again, I just like to remind everybody that's tuning in for this. Uh, children's audiobook. This is made for the kids. <laughs> for, the, for the little ones. Bar took another look at Brent's rear. My God, she really ripped into your flesh. That explains all the blood I saw in the green room. Couldn't you feel the pain? It didn't hurt while she was doing it because of the drugs. This was all happening on and off for a few weeks. I'm so horrified, Lavar. I've betrayed Gale and done such horrible things. I'm in so much pain, physical and emotional. I just want to die. Is there any way to get away from Lori? It seems that Paramount Studios wants her in the studio. Brent, can't you stay away from her mind-control drugs? 
It's not like I can't eat or drink. She contaminates everything with mind control drugs, even the water fountain. Oh my god. LeVar. She I kind of wonder, do you think Alex Jones watched this and that's where he got his theory about the frogs? Like, you know, Gail beat him to the punch about some psychopath uh, tainting the water and making everybody gay. Because the moment he drinks that goofy juice, he's got a fist up his ass. She seems to have friends everywhere. She has connections in the media. She told me, so it must be true. She's threatened my job and Gail's life. I've been trying to figure out where she comes from and how to keep her from entering the studio. Can you help me? Because my bodyguards aren't doing their job. And <laughs> Some random woman. That's even better. It's not even somebody that works at this movie studio. He's getting fist-fucked and raped <laughs> and brought to the zoo to, made, uh, to perform sodomy on an elephant by some random person that's just walking in off the street and his bodyguards are helpless. Poor Brent Spiner. Nobody can save him from the fist fucking. They're letting her meddle with my drinks and food and letting her get into the studio. She apparently has a lot of friends. I want you to sleep with me. You're going to sleep in my arms tonight and every night until we get this thing licked. LeVar held Brent from behind, rocked him to sleep, and went to guard the door. Oh, LeVar, Lori is so icky. I don't want her anywhere near me. I get the shudders every time I see or hear her. When I wake up with her in my bed, I feel like a spider has crawled into bed with me. Brent, you need to tell Gail about this. Gail's crying her eyes out over you, and you're giving her silence. You need her really bad right now. I think she'd understand. She could hold you up, Brent. Brent's face became ashen and his hands trembled. If Lori catches me calling Gail, she'll kill Gail. Brent's lips twitched and tears streamed down his face. I have a feeling we're going to get a gay sex scene. Right, right underneath the Reading Rainbow poster on the fucking rocket ship bedspread? LeVar Burton is going to fuck Data in his ass to take his mind off all the rape he's endured. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why there's so much gay shit in this, but it's fascinating. I never knew this about Data, but we're learning a lot today. Lori said she'd kill Gail if I tell her. As long as she's still wandering around the studio, I can't call Gail. Here, call Gail right now from my cell phone. No, LeVar. Brent eased back from LeVar and looked down at the floor, nodding his head in disbelief, then staring ahead with a blank stare, a faraway look, as if a nightmare played over and over in his mind, and he saw monsters and ghosts, knives and blood, fists rapid fire into his anus, evil grins, laughter, images whirling. I, I really want to make a soundboard with this. You know, if SBCC still does prank phone calls, there's some doozies of lines in this thing. Fist rapid fire into my anus is probably probably in the top ten right now. And blood, fist rapid fire into his anus, evil grins, laughter, images whirling about, screaming at him, jumping at him. Lavar, Brent screamed. I'm going mad. Lavar, is that you? Is this real? Am I here at your house or am I at the studio? Lavar, what's real and what isn't? Lavar. Brent broke down and wailed, releasing all the shame, all the resentment, all the hatred he felt for Lori. He raced for Lavar's kitchen, looked for a knife, scraped his hands through Lavar's kitchen drawer, hands trembled, fingers scurried, trying to find a knife of the right size. But he shook so much, when he reached for the knives, he dropped them, his hands shook so violently. Suddenly, Brent felt strong arms about him that clutched both his arms and held them back. No, Brent, you're not going to do this. Brent, this is real. I am Lavar, and I will protect you from Lori. Stop it, Brent, stop it. Okay, I'd like to sum up, you know, LeVar Burton's a lying motherfucker. All right, when Brent Spiner came to LeVar Burton and said, I have been anally sodomized, I had a woman put on a dildo that was the size of a human leg and fuck me until I cried. She put her fist so far up me, she got up to the goddamn, to the shoulder blade, LeVar, to the shoulder blade. As he was laying on the floor, sobbing and blood was pouring out of his ass, like a broken fire hydrant on a summer day, just gushing everywhere. LeVar laughed. LeVar was smiling. That was the happiest LeVar has ever been when Brent Spiner got fist-fucked by some nutcase off the street. So I don't know. I'd be reaching for that knife. I don't know if I'd trust this motherfucker, Mr. Reading Rainbow.
No, I'll protect you. Yeah, like you did in part two? I don't think so. Uh, a bit confusing. He should be dead. He's not. I don't know what's going on. Maybe this is hell. If it's hell, maybe he'll get sodomized by Satan. Let's, fi let's find out in part six. I can't tell Gail, LeVar. Don't tell Gail. Lori will kill her. Lori will kill her. All right, all right, Brent. I promise I won't tell... Yeah, that's the face. That's the face the motherfucker made. That is the exact look he had on his face when this dude was talking about being violently raped. LeVar <laughs> Burton doesn't give a shit. Gail, calm down, calm down. Brent wailed and wailed in LeVar's arms. Not as long as Lori still roams about the studio. Brent's voice had become husky from hours and hours of wailing. Lavar was horrified how his best friend had been transformed from a well-adjusted, happy and loving friend into a man who looked ready for the state mental hospital. Lori stuffs her purse with knives. The guards caught her with knives. She said she was a chef. Okay, how is this bitch getting into anywhere with security? I implore you, if you're watching this, give it a shot. Grab a dildo that has ball bearings on it and is the size of somebody's fucking leg. Get a bottle and write mind control drugs on it and just try to walk in somewhere. Doesn't even, doesn't matter where it is. A supermarket, a church, a school if you're feeling risky. <laughs> I guarantee you, you're not going to get very far. And somehow this chick is walking on to Hollywood Studio property. She must be a friend with Mr. Weinstein. I can, I can think of no other explanation. That's why she had to carry them, so they let her through. Brent scowled. Lori's so crazy. I really think if I tell Gail, she'll stalk Gail next. LeVar noticed that his best friend turned ashen white. All right, Brent. I swear over my dead body I won't tell Gail. Brent stared at LeVar in disbelief. Over your dead body you won't tell Gail? Over my dead body. He cuddled Brent from behind. LeVar wanted to get past this and focus on a solution. Though he felt Gail could help Brent now, he could see that to bring Gale into the picture could bring in complications that would destroy Brent. Can't you beat these mind control drugs? They're tricky. You know, uh, nigga, what are you talking about? Can't you beat the- they're mind control drugs, LeVar! <laughs> how, they, how are you expecting me to beat them? They're mind control drugs. It's- what- you- what- oh, <laughs> do I need to have a little bit of moxie? A little pep in my step? She drugs me, bro. She drugs me and fist fucks me. No, I can't beat this. Get me a gun. Give me a weapon. You feel as if you're still yourself and feel fully conscious, but you don't realize you're drugged. Even though I feel ill from them, when I'm on them, I don't think I'm delirious. It's sort of like having a dream, but you don't know what you're dreaming, so everything makes sense at the time. Can't you see the drugs or get rid of them in your system? Maybe make yourself throw up whenever you feel ill, because they make you feel ill. Have you tried that? Even. Oh my god, I wish there was an episode <clears throat> of Reading Rainbow where LeVar Burton told little kids. <laughs> Just... Hey kids, it's, co it's called bulimia and anorexia. Look into it. It solves your problems. You don't like something that's in your tummy? Just vomit it up. Just suck it. You know what? Buttercup, suck it up, Buttercup. Walk into that bathroom and just puke it up. All right? Man the fuck up, Brent. All right? So you got ass fucked by an elephant because some crazy bitch drugged you. You need to go into the bathroom and just puke a little. That, <laughs> that'll make you feel better. Even though they made me sick to my stomach, I didn't throw up the first time. But I started to realize that whenever I feel sick, it's Lori's brain control drugs. So I made myself throw up after that. What do the drugs look like? Did you see them in your vomit? They're clear and colorless, almost like water. That's why it's so easy to sneak them into food and drink. How'd you figure this out? Well, when the drug mixes with air, it slowly turns silver and then black, because that's what happens to my vomit when I'm under Lori's brain control drugs. LeVar tried to comfort and protect- Yeah, no, I think the black shit in your vomit after you get fucked by an elephant is deep internal bleeding. It's the blood from your organs that have been crushed by a fucking 14-foot penis. <laughs> That's not the mind control drugs, Brent. That's your body dying. <laughs> You're puking up your internal organs. Protect Brent, but it was no use, and every time they tried to thwart her, she would just find another way to get him. Brent. Oh boy, we're, the adventure continues. Only two parts left. 
And uh, this one, I think, has a Hollywood executive in it. Oh, we're in for a treat, I think. Finally summon the courage to tell Paramount about being raped. Lori has already talked to us about this matter. You raped her, and we won't ban her from the studio. We expect you to behave honorably around her or else. She spiked my drink. She tried to kill me. The studio executive looked over Brent with a scowl, as if he disdained the very presence of the star who made his show shine. Oh, my ears, McGoy. You're making it up. Just go on to the set. <laughs> it's, yeah, you got me too, buddy. You got me too. I see. Lori owns the studio. Brent could not hold back the tears. You think I enjoy sex that does this? Brent revealed his rear, filled with stitches. <laughs> How would you like to do that? To walk into wherever you want? <laughs> Just imagine that. You go into the office, it's a, it's a Monday morning, and you've been sodomized by some crazy woman, and your boss just doesn't care, so you drop your pants and spread your ass cheeks and point it at him. Look at it. Look at my fucking anus. ...and raw and oozing flesh. The executive winced at the sight. My, you really like it rough, don't you? I won't hear of this anymore. What an asshole. <laughs> just, I've just been brutally raped and I'm bleeding out of my asshole. Wow, you're a real pervert, buddy. <laughs> you seem to like it rough. I bet you like handcuffs and whips, sicko. Get out of my studio. How could such a beautiful woman do this to you? Brain control drugs. Get out of here, the executive scowled. You're a disgrace to this studio. Treat Lori with the respect she deserves. You just couldn't resist her body, could you? Her beauty just overwhelmed you with lust. If you don't give her the respect she deserves, we'll write data out of the show. We'll explain to the public that we can't have a rapist working for Paramount Studios. I remember that episode of The Next Generation. When William Riker and Captain Picard were on the deck. And, um, <laughs> fucking Worf walked in. And he's like, Captain, where's Data? And uh, Jean-Luc turned around and said, We don't fucking let rapists in here, Worf! The fuck is wrong with you, you Klingon asshole? The executive paused and looked out the window. One more thing. Not a word of this to anyone, you understand? He stared Brent down, as if in a dare. If we find you have leaked this to anyone, we'll paint you as a rapist to the media. Don't forget, we have photographic evidence. How Brent loved Gail and how this tore at his heart. He recalled Lori's words, You tell Gail about our sex and I'll kill her. Brent realized if he lost his job as Data, that he'd be out on the streets and unable to protect Gail. Yes, sir. You're gonna get raped and you're gonna like it, kid. You're gonna get raped every day and you're gonna say thank you. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> get the fuck out of my office. The executives then produced a contract that made him promise in writing that he would not tell anyone about the rape, or else they'd be entitled to smear him to the press as a rapist. If Brent refused to sign this contract, he'd lose his job. His heart racked with pain, sinking so low, he wasn't sure he could ever feel happy again. Now if Gail wanted to, he could never marry her, at least not any time soon. Even worse, he felt he betrayed all that made him feel worthy as a man. He could barely restrain his tears, but if he ended up in jail, either as a rapist or because of his debts, how could he keep Gail his pen friend or even protect her if he needed to in the future? Also, his co-stars made his job at Paramount a great place to work, and he had really bonded with them. So he decided to stay with Paramount for them, for his job as Data, so he could stay off the streets, to stay afloat for Gail. You know, he's a real team player. Most people, when they work in a, an environment where they get anally raped every day, they're like, yep, you know what, I'm done, okay? I'm, uh, you, you have me stay late at the office, I don't like it. You don't give me overtime, that upsets me. I don't get those pay raises I ask for or the vacation time I want, but I tolerate it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw the line. I'm going to draw the line right here at brutal, violent sodomy. <laughs> I'll put up with a lot. I'll sit in the wagey cagey, Amazon, but I'm not going to let you sodomize me. That's... That's a bridge too far. And besides, I really like my I really like my coworkers. He had just finished paying off a huge debt and was finally no longer in danger from his creditors. If he lost his job, he knew he'd be on the streets and possibly in debtor's prison. He wasn't nearly as rich as the press made him out to be. 
Can can we start a GoFundMe for Brent Spiner? I didn't know he was suffering from such tough times. I didn't know Data was on the verge of homelessness. All right, I think we all like that show, and I don't think Brent should really be living in a gutter. Maybe maybe we can uh, get a hold of Gail and get this GoFundMe going so this guy can uh, have a nice roof over his head. The world did not know of the huge debt he had incurred before he landed his jo famous job as Data of Star Trek, The Next Generation. So Brent signed the Paramount contract, promising not to tell anyone about the rape, giving Paramount permission to smear him to the press if he did. Perhaps he could weasel out of this contract later, he thought. The contract also made him promise not to bring charges against Paramount for defamation, that is, if he violated his, this contract and thus force him to go to the press and expose him as a rapist. In other words, he must not tell anyone about the September 1992 rape or about his contract he made with Paramount, or he'd lose his job and would have to pay back Paramount any earnings he made after he signed this contract with them. Typical paperwork. If you've worked at one office, Max, you've worked at them all. I think we've, I think we've all seen an employment contract like this. Brent never violated his contract until after it became invalid in 1999 because it had no legal purpose, to protect a criminal, Lori. Once he invalidated the contract, Lori continued to intimidate Brent into silence about her crimes by threatening to kill Gail if he dared to communicate with Gail. Though he brought criminal charges against Lori in 1998, the Jesuits always got her out of jail on technicalities. Therefore, Gail never knew the full details of his rape with Lori until 2012. Brent also needed the money from his Paramount job, and he actually loved the job, because he loved his co-stars and his role as Data. So, despite Lori, Brent strived to have a good relationship with Paramount, who, after 1999, actually seemed embarrassed about Lori. The oh, it took him, it took him seven years. Alright, but they eventually came around. So it took seven years of that Jewish Hollywood executive watching Brent Spiner get fucked on set in his ass every day. Seven years. <laughs> Over 2,100 days of nonstop violent sodomy before he finally said, you know what? Maybe I was wrong about this girl. <laughs> Maybe she's not the nicest lady on the, on the lot. The Jesuits made sure Brent never had enough money to survive without his Paramount earnings, forcing him to remain dependent on Paramount for financial survival. It wasn't the fault of his co-stars, but the higher-ups at Paramount were Jesuits. The Jesuits made sure that despite Brent's genius intelligence, he had a pitiful career after Star Trek The Next Generation finished its television run in 1994. He landed no other roles in Hollywood that made him as famous as Data. That is the face of a man that has been brutally fucked by an elephant. <laughs> He's, by the way, Brent Spiner is aware of her, and he is aware of the audiobook. Though he, I guess, doesn't like to talk about it, maybe I'd probably be slightly unnerved by a lady writing audiobooks and literature about my violent rape on a studio lot in 1992, and then describing my career as basically in a death spiral after leaving the show. Now, in September 1992, he learned the truth that Paramount Studios sponsored Lori McBride and encouraged her to rape him, allowing her in the studio even when she had knives, claiming to believe her story that she was a cook. That's... okay, you know what, this lady? She's talented. I... So you're telling me she was so good, so good at bullshitting people, so top tier at deception, that she can walk onto set with a four-foot-long dildo, a bottle that literally says mind control drugs and a purse full of knives and they're like oh that's that's just the cook the caterer is here somebody get brent spiner he said he wanted a sandwich <laughs> tell him Lori's here he loves her cooking so he came back to the studio later to tell lavar about his meeting with the executives and he ran right back into Lori mcbride she now knew he had signed the contract and felt herself invincible she was standing outside his studio room door, with her hands behind her back, holding a syringe full of drugs, grinning at him. He stepped backward in fright, and she lunged, plunging the syringe into his neck, then threw him into the room. He struggled fiercely, and so she hit him over the head with a frying pan, sending him stumbling into the bed. Then she tied him down with ropes on the bed spread eagle. In horror, he watched her undress. But oh, Chad, I have a feeling this is going to be extra bad. Look at, look at his face! That's the face of a man whose soul is dead. His soul is dead, and it's left his body. He really is a robot now. 
<laughs> God's gift of creation has fled the trauma. Look at her. This is his wife. In the real life, this is his wife, by the way. Uh, she's mounted him, spread him eagle, and tied him to the bed. I can, I can just imagine the beautiful lovemaking that's about to take place. The door creaked open again. It was Lavar, and he held his finger to his lips to shush Brent, so Brent wouldn't give away that Lavar was behind Lori because she didn't see him. That was when Brent Lavar. That's that's when Lavar Burden unzipped his pants and pulled his penis out. He kept winking at Brent, winking at him over and over as he stroked his penis, as Lori sodomized him and he sobbed. I told you, buddy. Wink, wink, wink. Stroke, stroke, stroke. I'd be here for you. Wink, wink. And I am. The last thing he remembered was her slowly removing her top, and a split second later, Lavar rushed into the room. But Brent had passed out. When he awakened, still tied to the bed, Lori and Lavar were gone, but blood was everywhere. I gotta get out of here, he thought. It's probably from his ass. <laughs> he <laughs> Blood's probably from him. He ropes about his body to free himself and then got up. A pool of blood led from the bed to the door and all the way out into the hallway. He followed the blood all the way outside, to the far back of the studio, fearing the worst. Lavar stood there, facing the dumpster. Brent trotted up beside him. What happened? Then Brent looked into the dumpster and saw Lori McBride. Lavar had killed her. That's why you don't fuck with engineering, okay? You fuck with Jordy LaForge, and he's gonna gut your ass, put you in a dumpster, and light your fucking corpse on fire. <laughs> that visor ain't to look cool. It's to shield his eyes from all the arsons he commits. This is between you, me, and this gallon of gasoline, Lavar said, lighting his match to light up a cigarette. He offered Brent a cigarette. Shaking his head in astonishment, Brent refused. Lavar threw the match into the dumpster, causing the dumpster to erupt into flames. The sound of the flames licking Lori's body filled the air. Putting his arm around Brent's shoulder, Lavar stood there with Brent, listening to the flames, seeing the sparks fly, and feeling the heat from the dumpster. They just stood there, watching the flames. To Brent, feeling the heat and seeing the sparks, the surreal became real. The sounds, the crackling and the sparks leaping from the dumpster against the night sky and the heat from the dumpster, reassured Brent that Lori could torment him or Gale no more. <laughs> they fucking have a bar... <laughs> they... Okay, Jordy LaForge just murdered a woman and lit her corpse on fire. And now Jordy and Data are cooking hot dogs over her burning fucking body, singing songs together as the cat they raped from earlier looks on in absolute fucking horror. As the night went on, they decided to camp out and wait until the blaze finished, roasting marshmallows and singing a few songs while passing around some beer. Brent felt his spirits lift. After that, Brent figured everything would be all right. Just focus on Gale and try to put this behind you, Lavar said. So for a while, Brent did. Brent even joked, with a happy, carefree air, about having sex on an episode on the Joan Rivers show in November. Yes, he thought, he had finally disposed of that devil, and she would never come back. Let's turn all my negative energy into positive energy, and just focus on Gale. Oh, and that's the end. That is the end. Beautiful. End of part one of this children's audiobook, The Forbidden Abyss by our girl Gail. It's been a wild ride. Poor, poor Data, raped on set for seven years straight, sodomized by elephants, forced to fuck cats, forced to drug Macaulay Culkin, disbelieved by everybody, made to sign a contract to say he was asking for it, finally rescued by his friend, who murdered her in cold blood, bludgeoning her to death with like a pipe or something, I don't know, threw her ass into a fucking dumpster, lit her on fire, and had a goddamn jamboree over the corpse. That is, that is storytelling. That's how you write an arc. I want to know what comes next. The whole book, there's a whole audiobook out there. Sadly, that's not online. However, the full-length movie is. So we'll not only get to watch this recreated in live action, we'll get to see the conclusion of it on Wednesday. Oh, I'm excited. I'm very excited for where this story is going to take us. I have I have some some inkling on where it might go just based on some of the other videos she's put up and some of the things I've read that she's written on where this might uh, end up taking us. Oh, 
Sir Scallywag, who's your favorite character so far? Oh, God, the cat. How could you not like the cat's acting? The meow! As it got fucking sodomized by an 18.25-inch penis. <laughs> the cat didn't stand a chance. Brutally raped. Brutally fucking anally raped by Data from Star Trek. Uh, from HTRTU, a narrator of the audiobook gave her takes in the pinned comment here. Oh, uh, yeah, actually, we, we just uh, we read that earlier. From Padre Speaks. Just wondering if you were in D-Live yesterday. I missed notification. Sweetie Squad roll out. No, I wasn't. A couple of people messaged me and told me that they got notifications that I went live. Um, I didn't. Uh, maybe it was due... Yesterday they were doing some like big charity event. So I'm wondering if they just sent out notifications to people to get them to show up to watch. Uh, it was PewDiePie and Jack Black doing something for mental health awareness. <laughs> Which, ironically... Fits in with the theme of the things we're looking at. Uh, but no, I did not stream yesterday. And from uh, Fuck Chinese Lemons. Uh, giving me a new a new stream outro. I can already tell it's going to be a winner. Adolf Hitler. <laughs> Adolf, what is this? Adolf Hitler's Rootless International Click. I will, uh, I'll have to give that a look over. I don't know how the Chinese feel about Nazis. Probably not great. Because <laughs> they were allied with the people that uh, did some stuff during World War II to them. Uh, we'll find out. I'm not sure how the Turks feel about Hitler either. It's a risk. <laughs> they might take all my precious Chinese lemons away. And then how will I fund our adventure into Brent Spiner's nonstop sodomy? Didn't really think that through, did you? Now we're, we won't be able to complete our journey on why Brent Spiner keeps getting fucked by people in his asshole. Uh, now... Gail put up a video, we'll take a look at that, called Brent Spiner's Letter to Gail, We Pooped. Apparently Brent Spiner is a pen pal of Gail's and likes to write her letters every so often, and one of his more recent letters was about a shit he took. So he thought, I took a pretty giant deuce, dropped a big old dump right in the toilet, I need to write Gail. Gail needs to hear about my success of taking a shit. So let me, uh, let me pull this up. I, this could be terrible. It could be great. I don't know. There's there's quite a lot to choose from. We got some videos to, to go through. Again, the majority will be on Wednesday, but I wanted to play some today. So let me get this uh, queued up. And we can hear from the author herself about Brent Spiner's magical adventures and taking shits. I mean, I'm, I'm sold on it. Uh, maybe we can even find a video about her talking about how he's been cloned by the evil gay Jesuits. It's fucking Jesuits, man. You think it's a Catholics? You know, with the whole little boy thing? It's the Jesuits you got to watch out for. They're the ones that are handing out those mind control drugs and giving people ideas on to br on bringing others to the zoo to get them fucked by elephants. All right, let's uh, let's cue this up again. This is Brent Spiner's letter to Gail. He wrote this to her. When did he write this to her? This year, January fourteenth. We pooped. January thirteenth, twenty nineteen. Dearest Gail, as you well know. I've been hard at work solving the dilemma of our current poop pregnancy crisis on board Church of Gale. Well, you know, I th <laughs> is this going to be about gay ass babies? Did Brent Spiner, does data from Star Trek research gay ass babies? I'm, I'm already interested, to be honest. I sit here writing to you now with my exceptionally long penis buried deeply and warmly into my vagina butt. <laughs> I need to start opening my letters to people. That's my new That's my new uh, opener on emails. The next time I get a hold of David Stay, I'm going to write and say, Dear David, uh, I, I'm currently writing you with my large erect penis inside my vagina butt. Or if I may say more correctly, our vagina butt. I couldn't be more thankful than now for the blessing that is my 18.5 inch manhood as the gentle hugging from your vagina inside my rectum is perhaps the source of my strength during these trying times. <laughs> His penis got bigger. I don't know what happened from the 1990s to now, but it used to be 18.25 inches, and it's grown half an inch. Brent Spiner's penis doesn't stop growing. By the time he's 80 years old, it'll stretch half a block down the street. Meanwhile, on Church of Gale, the rest of the men have understandably become deeply emotionally distressed. 
One must understand that for a man, pooping is an essential part of their masculinity. Aside from masturbation in the mornings, the evenings, and sometimes the afternoons in the workplace bathroom, pooping... I, <laughs> I like how she snuck that one in there. You know, hey, cranking one out is pretty, pretty normal. You know, in the morning, in the evening, sometimes at lunchtime, at work, at work, at your desk, while looking your boss in the eye and sticking your 18.5 inch penis in your vagina butt. It's one of the most magical and empowering times of a normal man's day. The physical pain of our swollen bowels combined with the loss of a critical emotional outlet has led many of our men to fall into depression. And a constant line has since formed outside of Gerard Butler's psychiatry office. Why don't you consent to a colostomy, Vladimir? Gerard asked. No, Vladimir pounded his fist on the table. Colostomy bag is for walking dead like Hillary Clinton. I would rather be euthanasia like dog than become as Hillary Clinton. Coughing fit, pants of shit, Gail's base, she's a base megapede. Trump 2020, Gail's on board. Come on. We need to get her a, a mega hat so she can complete the look. Doesn't She doesn't believe in that Hillary Clinton shit. <laughs> she's it for the walking dead. A colostomy bag for fucking zombies. I, Vladimir, hopefully it will not come to that. Gerard replied calmly in his soothing voice, with Brent working hard at a solution for all this. Soon we men may all poop honorably on our own terms. Similar conversations were had with all of the men reporting to Gerard's office for counseling. Okay, you know what? I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm going to pause this for one second. Um, she keeps bringing up Gerard Butler, and I'm sure that's an actor. I just don't know what from what. What is he an actor from? <laughs> Why is Gerard Butler counseling people about taking poops? <laughs> what the fuck? You've got to be... This is... I know this guy. Why is this guy involved in Brent Spider taking poops? <laughs> what the fuck? Um, let me... Let me let me pull his picture up for everybody. Oh, uh, let me zoom in on this. There we go. Uh, so this is the man that's providing counseling services to men that need to take poops. Uh, Gerard Butler. Now, I don't know uh, what insight he has into putting enormous penises into vagina butts. <laughs> or how it affects your psyche. But he's pretty fucking adamant. The colostomy bags are for bitches. You heard it here. Gerard Butler, if you need a colostomy bag, go vote for Hillary Clinton. Take that lib shit stuff the fuck out of here. This is Megatown. All right? We put our penises in our vagina butts proudly here. <laughs> fucking Gerard Butler. <laughs> how did he get roped into this? Oh. You know, there are calls, uh, recorded Skype calls on her channel uh, that are allegedly from Gerard Butler telling her about his nefarious plans with gay clones. Uh, <laughs> maybe that's what did it. Similar, except for one strange outlier, Bubba, the morbidly obese black Jesuit. Bubba, of course, is not a man on the marriage list, nor did he receive a vagina butt. However, Bubba, murmuring to himself through tears, has joined the line time and time again to speak with Gerard. Lick my butthole, Bubba would sob weakly. Lick my butthole. Lick my bu bu butthole. I, yeah, I'm going to have to make a soundboard out of just a majority of the things that she says. Jesuit. Bubba, of course, is not a man on the marriage list, nor did he receive a vagina butt. However, Bubba, murmuring to himself through tears, has joined the line time and time again to speak with Gerard. Lick my butthole, Bubba would sob weakly. Lick my butthole, lick my bu bu butthole. I, laddie, Gerard would say, I cannot understand ye. You need me to lick your butthole? It wasn't until after recruiting the help of Hugh Jackman how the fuck did Hugh Jackman... You know what? Uh, okay. We need to keep track of this. I'm going to create a celebrity... You know, we're doing this now. <laughs> Just because there's no other way I'm going to keep track of this. So who do we who do we have involved in the gay ass sex and uh, licking black men's assholes? Uh, so we got Gerard Butler. Let me... Let me I'm, I'm grabbing his picture. We're putting this up on screen. I don't want anybody to get lost. And so it's really important. <laughs> it's really important... 
that um, you know every this is accessible to everybody. So let me let me put his picture up. You're gonna have to give me a second chat to get caught up so we can keep all the characters straight. Uh, <laughs> Gerard. Oh, all right. Here's our boy. So this is our psychiatrist, uh, Gerard Butler, uh, the expert on anal. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't even. I don't know. I don't know what you'd call it. Uh, somehow Hugh Jackman is involved. Oh, let me let me just just do that. Uh, where's our boy Hugh Jackman? You know, was wasn't he Wolverine? Am I thinking of the right one? I don't even know what he's. Yep, yep, he's uh, Wolverine. Wolverine's involved in this. Let's grab a good Wolverine picture. Again, important for the story, so everybody uh, doesn't get lost on this. <laughs> oh, Jesus, this lady. Okay, I'll pull his picture up. So these are the men having this conversation. So just like when you're listening to her letter that was written by Brent Spiner, you know, Data from Star Trek, when he's talking about this, uh, these are the guys that are involved. These are the dudes that uh, are involved in the, uh, <laughs> I don't even know what you'd call it, I'll be honest with you. I don't think you're really, the video, watching the video itself, the uh, not really important, so I think we're good. Okay. Who can understand Bubba speak that we finally figured out what he has been trying to talk to Gerard about. It turns out that poor Bubba has never healed from the loss of his late ginger boyfriend. As you may remember, Bubba's ginger boyfriend died in 2017 at the extremely fat hands of Sarah Avery. Sarah Avery, the massively obese biological weapon of the old Jesuit order, devoured Bubba's ginger boyfriend in one gulp while the two lovers were on a romantic stroll through San Francisco. Bubba had planned to propose to his ginger that same day. He had even had the ring in his pocket. Bubba, still faithful to his ginger boyfriend, refuses to let death keep them part. He is still committed to the one true love of his life and cannot bear to move on. He would rather allow his butthole to become dry, cracked, and withered from being unlicked than ever give his butthole to the tongue of any other man on this earth. You know, that's <clears throat> that's true love, folks. <sighs> I know, you know, it's hard when you lose a loved one. But when you say, when you make the commitment to never let another person lick your asshole again, because the one you love, your dead ginger boyfriend that was eaten by an obese biological weapon, <laughs> when, you, when you commit to that, that's, that's fucking passion. That's true love. And I think Gerard Butler and Wolverine agree with Gail on this, that that is a, that is a, a, a beautiful commitment, really. Gerard was moved to tears as Hugh Jackman explained Bubba's passionate and overwhelming grief, wiping the wetness from the crease of one eye as he scribbled down notes onto his notepad. I have since asked our church to pray for him, and I ask that all of our followers do the same. As to the physical health crisis at hand, or should I say at vagina butt, I had been making slow and uneven progress. While I understood the anatomy and biology involved, I didn't quite understand the science. I knew I was going to need more help. I needed a real scientist, someone who knew everything from the three phases of matter to how weather balloons worked, someone with real knowledge, with a solid reputation that one could trust. It was while I was on my way for a coffee break that my prayers had been answered. Rolling up on a skateboard, a white lab coat sailing behind him in the wind, was none other than Bill Nye the Science Guy. <laughs> okay, let's add him too. Hey, Bill Nye the Science Guy. You know, I actually could believe that one. <laughs> if you're going to tell me somebody's talking about licking assholes and gay butt vagina sex, Bill Nye, I, that's a believable one. <laughs> let's add Bill Nye to this. Oh, we've got a whole... This is like... Uh, it's like, so, <laughs> I don't know, it's like Celebrity Jeopardy. Uh, what's a good Bill Nye picture? And we need to find, is there one of him on a skateboard? Dare I dream? Is it possible there's a Bill Nye photo with him on a skateboard to really set the mood? No, sadly. Sadly, there's not. Well, that's okay. That's okay, Mr. Nye. <laughs> we'll still put you in here. Yeah, that's that's the picture I'm gonna go with. Bill Nye, the science guy, just she needed somebody to explain balloons to her, so she went to a real scientist. You know, Bill Nye, Bill, Bill Nye, the real scientist. 
Oh, I wonder if the Jesuits are trying to make him look assholes, too. Fucking Jesuits, man. Uh, there we go. I think you, you can... There we go. That's that's Mr. Knight. Boy, we got a whole, a whole fucking group of them now. Gerard... Oh, you know what? Let me move that down. Oh, no, there we go. Want to make sure... <laughs> no, this is disastrous. There we go. All right. Let's get back to our story about uh, licking assholes. What's up, dude? Bill Nye proclaimed. One of our church members in the hallway gasped. Bill Nye, the science guy, they exclaimed. This got the attention of the entire floor. Church members began pumping their fists, chanting, Bill, Bill, Bill. Bill Nye, I said. Boy, am I glad to see you. You're like an angel sent from God himself. Thank you, Brent. I got many tweets from Gale followers telling me that you all needed my help. So what kind of poop situation have you boys gotten yourselves into now? Well, not to sound like a party poop. Now, I like how that implies that this has been a convers. This has been a situation that's happened once before, at the very least once before. <laughs> oh, you crazy guys, it's me, it's me, Bill Nye, Gerard Butler, and Hugh Jackman. Gail told me you had another poop situation. <laughs> I skateboarded down here. Pooper. But our vagina, but Christmas gifts from Jesus came with one dilemma. We can't poop. Well, that's just shitty, he chuckled. <laughs> Come on, my constipated friend, let's get to the lab. Bill Nye slid his goggles down over his eyes. He then dropped his skateboard and motioned for me to hop on. I jumped on board, wrapping my arms around his waist, and the two of us were off to the lab like a pair of superheroes flying down the hallway. The first thing to do was get Bill up to speed on everything I'd already tried. So far, our initial experiments had been performed on monkeys. Using my surgical prowess as a doctor, I had attempted to simply reroute the colon through the urethra. Obviously- Holy shit, Bill. What the fuck? Bill, Bill Nye the science guy is doing monkey experiments and rerouting their assholes to the tips of their dicks. Bill, that's, uh, that's sort of fucked up, buddy. That's, uh, that's some next-level degeneracy, Bill. We first tried to get the mon monkeys to poop through their penises. Their penises were simply not fit to deliver poop babies. The urethrae ruptured, filling the testicles with poop until they exploded. When that didn't work, we tried to create an additional hole in the vagina that could pass poop. The monkey labia simply swelled with poop until the monkeys once again exploded. By the end of the... Again, I just like to remind people, uh, this is a letter from Brent Spiner, the man who played Data on Star Trek, to Gale, explaining that Bill Nye's wacky science experiments of making monkeys explode by filling them with shit isn't really helping out their buddies Gerard Butler and Hugh Jackman with their ass baby problem. The experiments, all monkeys involved had died. It just doesn't make sense, Bill, I said. Indian women poop from their vaginas. That's how they lubricate themselves before sex. Why can't I just perform a race change operation on our vagina butts to get them to function like an Indian woman's? Well, Indian women also excrete small amounts of poop through their lungs and their pores. Yeah, I can confirm this. This is scientifically verifiable. All right, the designated street shitters do extrude fecal matter from every portion of their body, every pore on their body. She doesn't mean Indian is Native American. <laughs> she meets Indian dot on head. And um, yeah, you know, they've, they've mastered the art of shitting out of every part of their body. So the actual amount of poop that, that is excreted from their vaginas is relatively small compared to the poop babies you men need to deliver. You're right, Bill. I hadn't considered that. What else can we do? First things first, these experiments need to be done on humans, not monkeys. But Bill, all the monkeys involved so far in our experiments have died. Trust me, Brent, the U.S. pharmaceutical industry does this all the time. I realized that Bill was right. If we were going to handle this like a professional government study, we were going to need to select eligible human volunteers. Very soon, we had collected a diverse testing group consisting of prison inmates, welfare recipients, illegal immigrants, Mentally retarded orphans. <laughs> what? <laughs> Bill.
Bill Nye is collecting mentally retarded orphans and illegal immigrants to make them explode with shit. Prostitutes, and of course the homeless. Each participant was promised $5 for their cooperation. With no time to lose, we dove straight into the testing phases. My laboratory desk turned into my literal drawing board. As each idea rushed to mind, I found myself scribbling furiously like a madman. Sketch after sketch, formula after formula, I drew out plans and diagrams that would be immediately handed off to Bill Nye for implementation. No can do, Branty would report. The subject pooped from every orifice then immediately died. Or, hey, Brent, they died again. But oh, golly gosh, Brent. Hate to tell you, it's me, Bill Nye. All those kids I kidnapped, you know, the illegal <laughs> the illegal foreign immigrant orphans. Uh, yeah, they all died. They exploded, Brent. You know, I tried to tell you, uh, uh, Brent and Gerard and Hugh, uh, that filling little children from foreign countries with poop <laughs> would result in <laughs> explosions. But you wouldn't listen to me. Now I got all these dead fucking orphans over here and I don't know what to do with it. I can't skateboard through their <laughs> the viscera that's coating my lab now. But this time they came back as a poop-craving zombie. Or, hmm, that didn't work. I, it had the same result as the human centipede idea. Hundreds of ideas, hundreds of sketches, hundreds of formulas. My mind churned like a machine. And after every failure, I found myself right back at my desk, head in my hands. Finding a solution was beginning to seem hopeless. This should do it, Bill said as he eyed the syringe in his hands, flicked it with his fingers and squirted out the air bubbles. He turned and stuck the needle into the bicep of a large prison inmate. Moments passed as we waited for the results. All of a sudden, the inmate's eyes bolted, <clears throat> and he began screaming. Startled, I jumped to my feet, my body stiff with full alarm as I gripped my desk with one hand. The screaming crescendoed like a siren. The inmate clawed at his face, full teeth bared. As his eyes rolled back into his head, mountains of poop began pouring out of his eyes. He continued screaming. He screamed until his entire bowels had emptied themselves. Can so Please, for the love of God, I know some of you guys can draw. Can somebody draw me a picture of Bill Nye making an orphan inmate? explode shit out of his eyeballs <laughs> can somebody please draw this picture i need this picture in my life so we could use it on the next stream i need to see bill nye drugging orphan illegal immigrant orphan children and making shit explode out of their eyeballs from his eye sockets and covered the floor of the lab i sighed and collapsed back into my chair i peeled the latest sheet of paper off of my desk and crumpled it up into a ball, tossing it into a now overflowing trash can of discarded, failed designs. Bill Nye patted the now blind inmate on the shoulder, handing him a $5 bill on his way out of the room. Sorry about that, buddy. No, your eyeballs exploded with shit from your tummy, but here's a $5 bill for being such a, a good guy about it. <laughs> Have a nice day. Our team of retard janitors and hazmat suits promptly arrived on the scene. <laughs> Fucking retard janitors! <laughs> you need them to be stupid so they don't report you. On the shoulder, handing him a $5 bill on his way out of the room. Our team of retard janitors in hazmat suits promptly arrived on the scene to mop up the latest explosion of poop. What's next, Brent? Well, I said, looking at my overflowing wastebasket, I should take this trash out, then we can regroup. Just then... One of our nanotechnology research techs entered the room. No need to take out the trash, Brent, he said, pulling out his Android phone. He fiddled with his phone for a moment, then pushed a button on the screen. The trash inside the trash can began to glow a brilliant blue, and within seconds, the trash dissolved seemingly into thin air. Wow, Bill exclaimed. So you guys switched to vaporizing trash. That's very environmentally conscious of you. Actually, the trash was transported, the tech explained. We invented a new app that allows us to take our trash and transport it out into deep space. You know what? I think I know who she's talking about here with all the high-tech science stuff. Let me grab his picture so we can put him up with everybody else. You know, I don't want to I don't want to leave our inventor out of this amazing story. He deserves credit. <laughs> I, I know exactly who uh, turned nanites into a fucking phone app. 
So let me just get his picture here. <laughs> we'll add him to the list. Oh my God, this is a great story. Gail, you you are you really outdo yourself. Let me just say that. You really know how to tell a tale. I'm sorry, this isn't... Uh, what am I saying? This isn't a story. This is a letter that Data wrote her talking about Bill Nye's ass baby experiments. <laughs> Killing orphan children! Okay, let me get uh, our inventor's picture up here. Oh, boy. It's gonna... We're running out of screen space. Here we go. Here we go. I'm fairly certain this is who she's talking about. Put him, put him right there. There you go, Elon. <laughs> welcome to the, welcome to the adventure. Uh, okay, well, let's uh, let's continue on. I'm, I'm dying to know what happens next. Well, that makes sense, Bill replied. There's a lot of space in space. Interesting, I remarked, narrowing my eyes and rubbing my silver five o'clock shadow. Wait, Brent, I've seen that look before. Bill said, "What are you thinking?" We hadn't another moment to lose. With Bill's help, we quickly got to reverse engineering the app and adjusting it to fit our needs. Within the next hour, we had a migrant worker with an expired work visa on our treatment table. Okay, I announced. Are you ready, Bill? Ready. I love the idea that fucking Gerard Butler, Hugh Jackman, Brent Spiner, Elon Musk, and Bill Nye are abducting immigrants and bringing them to some, like, fucking prison facility to inject them with super drugs and nanites so, so they can shit out their dick. Energize, I called. Bill flipped the switch on the wall beside him. It was a tense moment. The migrant began to glow a sparkling blue. All of a sudden, there was a loud zing, and we all covered our eyes from the brilliant flash of blue light before us, a wet plop. We uncovered our eyes and looked back to the table. The migrant worker was gone, and in his place was a pile of poop. I stared, mouth agape, as a single rogue piece rolled off the table and onto the floor. I was aghast in shock and frustration. Bill, instead of transporting the poop into space, we transported the migrant worker into, into space, and his poop was left behind. Based. That see, okay, hey, Trump, are you taking lessons? You need to get a hold of these guys, all right? You don't need to build a wall to get rid of the Mexicans. Elon Musk and Bill Nye's nanite transport technology that's integrated into iPhone apps could just shoot them into fucking space. This was the moment I finally lost all hope. We were nowhere closer to finding an answer. I'd given my last remaining ounce of strength to this project and felt like I could give no more. I sunk to my knees and covered my face with my hands, praying to Jesus. Brent, Bill called. I think I know what went wrong. Bill rushed to a computer panel on the wall and began tapping on the screen, making adjustments to our code. We just need to invert the fecal phase discriminator and compensate for relativistic harmonics in the subspace matrix. Only problem is we're out of test subjects. He was right. Take me, I said. Bill's eyes widened. But Brent, this is too big of a risk. And you, my friend, are not an expendable. We need you. Look, there's plenty more homeless people in California. <laughs> Bill Nye is a cold-blooded motherfucker. Look, Brent, listen to me, buddy. We'll just abduct some more homeless people. So we've been doing this for years. Nobody's ever going to believe them. Nobody's ever going to believe that I, Bill Nye, you, Brent Spiner, along with Gerard Butler, Elon Musk, and Hugh Jackman, are abducting immigrants and children and teleporting them into space so we can harvest their poop. We just need to bait them with spare change and pieces of bread like we did last time, and we don't have time. Test it on me. Brent, it's just a theory. I don't even know if it will work. I'm not an expert in this field. Bill, I said, placing my hand on his shoulder, your experience as a scientist on television is exactly what makes you qualified to tackle tough scientific and social issues such as climate change and helping men poop out of vagina butts. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> That's correct, Mr. Nye. Your, 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 your television science puts you in the best position to do this. Okay, you're the, you're the expert here on vagina butts. I believe in you. You can do this. Bill exhaled. 
stoking himself up for the task, he nodded to me. You really are a vast and red-blooded man, Brent. I appreciate your faith in me, I smiled humbly. Now let's do this. You're right, let's do this. I climbed up onto the table and laid back. Bill went back to the panel on the wall, checking his work and prepping for the final testing phase. I closed my eyes and prayed to Jesus for support. We're ready, Bill announced, pulling his goggles down over his eyes, transporting in three, two, one. My final thoughts were of my precious smiling Gail wearing her blue blouse. Clank! Bill slammed down the metal switch on the wall. I felt a warm, fuzzy sensation in my lower abdominals. My abdomen glowed a brilliant blue, and within moments, the pressure was gone. My poop baby belly deflated, and I felt my body release a cocktail of endorphins and oxytocin, the kind of happiness and bonding chemicals a man's body releases after a really good poop. I... <coughs> So, Brent Spiner wrote her a letter to tell her, this is like, this is breaking news. I mean, we really should get a hold of CNN. Brent Spiner, the actor that played Data, has given birth through teleportation to an, a gay ass baby. He's a mommy now. Brent Spiner is a mommy slash daddy to a beautiful gay ass baby. I opened my eyes and sat up. Bill, we did it, I cried. We did it, Bill cheered. We hugged each other and laughed in manly victory. With our solution finally at hand, we proudly got to work on employing a convenient way for all the vagina butt men affected by poop pregnancy to use this technology quickly and easily whenever they need it. Without further ado, allow me to announce the official release of iPoop. iPoop is a free app available for all Android phones that allows any man to transport their poop directly from their bowels and into deep space with the simple press of a button. This In other is words, amazing. push to poop, TM. The poop inside your bowel was detected and safely transported out of your body without needing to pass through your penis, vagina, butt, or any other orifice of the body. This app works on women as well, so it may appeal to morbidly obese women and men who refuse to leave their armchairs and who run the risk of becoming fused to their couches by poop. It's also convenient for any millennial on the go when they really need to go, and man children who still sit around playing video games in their mid to late 20s. I can... Mill Millennials blown the fuck out. Oh, you, you lazy kids can't even get up to take a shit anymore. Now you can use Brent Spiner's phone app, iPoop, to teleport your shit into outer space say that using eye poop is just as pleasurable and emotionally satisfying as having a real poop. So far, the men have given positive feedback, remarking that the app is fun, addictive, a good time killer, and that gives them another excuse to be on their phones. Most men are on their phones while pooping anyhow. This app adds convenience and makes pooping easy for everyone. One word of warning is that users of the app should hold very still after pushing in order for the scanner to detect the correct coordinates of the poop. So far, we haven't had anyone disappear or accidentally teleport their intestines into deep space, but it helps to remain cautious. I hear that Bill and I have been elected to receive a Nobel Prize for our work and our invention of the iPoop app. With you know, chat, make sure to go on to Twitter and thank Bill Nye. Congratulate him. He's won a Nobel Prize. Say, <laughs> say congratulations, Bill Nye. On the development of your iPoop app, <laughs> teleporting teleporting poop into outer space is quite the achievement. With great relief, I now look forward to enjoying many good years with my vagina butt and the vagina butts of all the men still on the marriage list. I look forward to the day I look into my precious Gail's adoring eyes, and instead of spreading open the legs of Vladimir, Hugh, or Gerard, I will spread open Gail's and enter her true vagina. Your safe and adoring husband, Brent Spiner. What a beautiful, what a beautiful letter Brent wrote her. It's heartwarming. What an adventure he's been up to. I had no idea this is what Data's been doing after Star Trek. I, I didn't know he was like, you know, just chilling with the boys, making teleportation poop technology for vagina ass babies. You know, not the first thing that would have come to mind when I think, what is data doing?
And then again, I didn't know that he had to fuck a cat and got sodomized by an elephant either. So there's some wild shit going on in Data's life. <laughs> it's good to know he's got friends, though. You know, like Elon Musk and uh, yeah, Hugh Jackman, uh, Gerard Butler, and of course, our Nobel, uh, Nobel Prize winning TV scientist who abducts immigrant children and orphans, Bill Nye. That's <laughs> great to know. Oh, just just warms my heart, really, it does. Oh, we've got a few a few things here. Uh, chilled milk. RCMP apologizes for streaming the press conference on the double slaying with cat filters activated. <laughs> From Rodson. Would Jim let Bubba lick his butthole? Oh, God, yes. I would jump at that opportunity. Of course, he'd be breaking his vow to his dead ginger boyfriend. <laughs> his dead ginger boyfriend who um, got eaten by an obese woman. Uh, we've got one from Sir Scallywag. Am I sensing a new art contest? I know probably not going to do an art contest, but if you feel like drawing a picture of Bill Nye making shit explode out of the eyes of an immigrant child that he abducted off the street, feel free to. And I will proudly display that on stream. From uh, <laughs> Unirock TV. Wow. Yeah, I know. I think you summed it up with that one. Uh, wow, indeed. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, this stream, just an hour today. I've got a couple of appointments this morning, so I've got to cut it short. Uh, Wednesday will be the big one. We're going to watch Gail's movie, the live-action version of the children's audiobook that we watched on Friday and today. We're going to go through Gail lore. We're going to find out about the Church of Gail. We're going to find out about Brent Spiner's gay homosexual clones that have taken over his life. And about his wife trying to bomb Gail from the clouds every day when she goes on walks. There's a lot to explore. We'll also find out why Jesus wanted to put semen into her. <laughs> and and we will find out why Gerard Butler is so interested in gay ass babies. Because apparently he's been on a Skype conversation with her multiple times. Explaining the, the whole reason behind the cloning and those fucking Jesuits. That Jesuit conspiracy runs deep. I know you guys don't... Don't believe it, but Gail has no reason to lie to us. She's pure. She's a pure girl. Oh, my God. I, uh, you know, by the way, she has a thousand videos on her channel. There's so much. There's so much. There's so many stories. She's written so many novels, had so many Skype conversations with uh, quote-unquote celebrities. Uh, there's tons of letters, uh, live-action movies, children's books. Very talented woman. And I look forward to Wednesday and to however much time we end up dedicating to this. <laughs> it's, I, uh, I love this kind of shit. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, I hope you guys have a good Monday. I hope you have a good week. Uh, be sure to tune in Wednesday for the, for the real meat and potatoes of our girl Gail. Let's uh, yeah, we'll just we'll play it out on Rama Rama. Why not? Where are we here? All right, chat. Have a good day, have a good week, and I will see you on Wednesday.